Hi everybody, it's Tish from The Bishop. How are you? I hope you enjoyed the last experiment that we did for you online. Um, so I decided to try to do another one today. Um, I don't know if you've been to the grocery store recently, but I noticed that all of the toilet paper is gone. Um, that's been happening a lot. Um, but I also noticed something funny, which is not only the toilet paper, but lots of other things are gone. Uh, really anything with paper or any kind of wipe or napkin or anything like that is really gone. So I started thinking like, are people flushing these things? Um, and I'm wondering if those things are good enough or as good as toilet paper or safe to flush down the toilet. So I thought I'd do a little bit of an experiment here um, to see if all of these things are flushable. And by flushable, we mean they'll dissolve in water when they get down the toilet and won't clog the pipes. So what I've done is I've chosen six different things that can possibly be used and we're gonna check them out today. We're gonna set up our experiment today and then we're gonna come back tomorrow and see what the result is. So what I did is I took two grams of each thing. Um, they all have the same mass. Do you guys know what I mean by mass? Mass is simple, it's just the amount of stuff that's there. So we wanna start with the same amount of stuff in each one of our experiments. So my first start is with two grams of toilet paper and I weighed it on my little kitchen scale here. We're just gonna go ahead and get it stuffed in my bottle. And I just grabbed some extra bottles out of the recycling bin to do this. This is tissue. Um, I've got paper towel here. This is just ordinary paper towel that you would use in the kitchen. I've noticed a lot of that is missing too. And you'll notice that I've labeled everything so I know which one is which. This is a napkin, a regular dinner napkin. And I'm having to roll these up to put them in the bottle, but that's okay. This is going to be interesting because this is a wipe and it actually says on the package that the wipe is flushable. In other words, safe to flush down into the system. And this is a disinfectant wipe that we can use to clean counters. You might use it to clean your bathroom. So we'll see if those are flushable too. So they're all in my quote unquote pipe right here. And what we need to do is add some water. So I have some water here. I'm going to try to add the exact amount of water, same amount of water to each one. So we're going to add about a cup and a half of water to each bottle. So we'll just carefully pour it out and measure. So you can see we've got right about a cup and a half of water. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in. It's nice to have something with a lip and measurements on it. Okay. All right, so it looks like we've got the same amount of, oops, I forgot this one. Always worth going back and checking your work. Looks like I need a little more water. And I bet you guys are thinking, I wonder if it matters what temperature the water is. And it might. I'm using cold water because usually that's what you have in your system, in your toilet, is cold water, not hot water. So I am using cold water for my experiment.
All right. I think that's done it. We've got them all with the same amount of water. We're going to go ahead and put the lids on. Now you guys probably are thinking, what happens when you flush the toilet and this goes down the drain? Well, flushing the toilet, you probably know that things get stirred around a little bit and shaken around on their way down. So that's what we're going to do with our experiment here. We're going to swirl and shake each one of these. So you ready? Shake, shake, swirl, swirl, shake, shake, swirl, swirl, shake, shake. Swirl, swirl, shake, shake. Swirl, swirl, shake, shake. Swirl, swirl, shake, shake. So now we're set up, but we have to leave these for a while and see if they dissolve. So think about, predict what you think might dissolve and might not. If it doesn't dissolve, it might not be flushable. So remember we have toilet paper, flushable wipes, paper towel, napkins, disinfectant wipes, and facial tissue. So we'll check it out tomorrow and see which one would make it down the drain. Thanks very much and we'll check you tomorrow. Hi everyone, it's Tish from The Bishop again. Um, I'm back with you from the, for the results of our um, experiment with flushables. Um, if you remember yesterday, we took a whole bunch of different kinds of potentially flushable things. Um, we took toilet paper as our example and we put them all in water and now they've been left for over 24 hours. So this will give us a good idea of what things are flushable if they have actually dissolved in the water. So the first thing I want you to do is kind of look at the different choices we had here. We had toilet paper, paper towel, napkins, facial tissue, disinfectant wipes, and flushable wipes, at least flushable according to the package. Um, one thing I want you to notice before we start opening these bottles is we're looking for how well the things that we put in there, the paper products that we put in there dissolved. And one good way you can just observe that is look at how cloudy the water is. Um, if you see a lot of cloudy areas, that's a good sign that something has dissolved. You guys probably have the experience of when you dissolve salt in water, it gets a little cloudy. So when water has things dissolved in it, it tends to get a little bit cloudier, um, sometimes for the good, sometimes for the bad. So if you're seeing a lot of clear areas in the water bottles, that might be sign that things haven't dissolved as well as we would expect. So we're going to start with sort of our control here. It's our toilet paper. We're going to give it a swirl, swirl, shake, shake, just like next, last time. And we can see that it's pretty cloudy. So what I have here is a strainer. So you guys may or may not know that when the water you flush down the toilet goes all the way through to the waste treatment plant, they have to strain out things um, just in case something uh, gets in there that could damage their equipment. So we're going to put our strainer over top of our nice silver bowl and we're going to pour this in and see how much gets stuck. It's kind of blobby. But one thing you'll notice is there's a lot of clear water coming out and all the pieces left behind are really sort of soft and mushy. Um, so probably this would continue to dissolve this way. And these are all like really tiny pieces, even though they're sort of clumping up. So, so that is our toilet paper. Um, so, all right. That's our control. So I'm going to clear out my, I'm going to clear out my strainer, and we'll try the next one. So the next one is paper towel, and you can see there's a lot of clear water in here, and we'll see if this comes out. So. So you can see there's nothing being caught in the strainer, but the reason there's nothing being caught in the strainer is because the paper towel 
is actually blocking the opening to the bottle. So it's actually dripping. I can't even get the whole paper towel out. So you can see that this hasn't really dissolved very well. It's in one big giant clump. And you can imagine if that was in your pipe that it would be really hard for the water to get through. So I'm going with paper towel, not really flushable. I don't even have to wipe anything out because none of the paper towel came out of there. Okay, this is our napkin. Again, it looks kind of clear. We'll see what our napkin did. See if our napkin even comes out of the bottle. Give it a shake. You can see like that one too is not, it's just one big lump in the bottom. So pretty much that's what it's gonna do in your pipe. <laughs> get all lumpy, I can't get that one out of the bottle either. Even if I shake it really hard. So I'm going with napkin, not flushable. So here is our facial tissue. So this would be the same kind of tissue you get in like a tissue box that you would use on your nose. So this is coming out a little bit. So that actually did get soft enough and dissolve enough that it's starting to come apart. It might need a little more time, but this has been over 24 hours and this is still in a big lump. So maybe a little better than the paper towel and the napkin, but it's still pretty lumpy. But it didn't make it out of the bottle, so it made it through the pipe. Okay, this is our disinfectant wipe. So you can see it's pretty clear, the water. I don't think this is really dissolved at all. So let's give that a try. And that one's sort of kind of coming out. Gonna have to shake it really hard. Nope. Still not really coming out. And actually, if I pull it all the way out, you can see that it pretty much looks exactly like the wipe looked. It's even still got some strength to it. I can pull it. I could probably still clean with this. So it hasn't dissolved at all. It hasn't even softened at all. So probably not a good choice for flushable. Okay, so this last one is the one that I'm curious about um, where we had this wipe advertised as flushable. So shaking it up and again you can see there's a lot of clear we'll see if this comes out of the bottle and again this is again pretty solid all the same as it was so this pretty much looks exactly like it did when I put it in the water 24 hours ago so you guys may be asking yourself like oh did she didn't shake them all and I didn't you're right um, I'm not sure it would have made a lot of difference because especially for these ones where it's still um, one giant piece um, but I could keep them in longer and try to shake them up some more and see if they dissolve better. So that would be another way to extend this experiment. So I would say that probably the only thing really, really flushable here is toilet paper. So one thing to remember when you're um, looking for toilet paper, if you're looking for substitutes, um, if it's not available, that's not your fault. You can't help that. But if you have to use one of these other products, you want to make sure that you're not flushing it down the drain. You want to make sure you're putting it in the trash and throwing it away. And that'll help keep our wastewater system healthy and make sure that your pipes stay nice and clear. 
Thanks for joining us with this experiment. I hope you have a chance to try it yourself at home and have a great afternoon and see you at the Bishop. Hi, I'm here with Colt Facer. Colt, can you tell us what you do for work? I am a uh, certified wastewater operator here in the state of Florida and I work at a wastewater treatment plant. Thank you, and a wastewater treatment plant. Can you tell us a little bit about what what happens there and how that's related to the water cycle? Uh, well, long story short, a uh, wastewater treatment plant is a accelerated version of Mother Nature. And uh, basically, we take everything that comes down the sewer system, uh, organic and or inorganic, and we remove those things from the water, uh, hopefully making the water cleaner and safer to return back to the environment. Uh, so really, we're, we're helping to keep the environment clean. And if we're doing our jobs right, the water is usually cleaner than the water that we're putting it back into, which is usually lakes, rivers, and streams. Uh, here in Florida, it does sometimes go back out in the ocean. Uh, so we have to meet the standards to make sure that that water is as clean as, if not cleaner, than the waters we're putting it in. That sounds really important. So can you tell us a little bit about what should and should not go down a toilet to make its way to your wastewater treatment plant? Well, the things that you should let go down a toilet are the things that should, uh, that you can think of. The toilet paper being about the only thing that uh, does not come from your body that should go down a toilet. Anything else really should not. Uh, there's a lot of products on the market uh, that you can find that say that they're flushable. Uh, while those things may not clog your toilet, uh, further down the line they create problems in the sewer system. Uh, a lot of times that means that, especially when they get to my work, uh, to the wastewater treatment plant, uh, those things clog up pumps or screens and things like that, and then we manually have to remove those, uh, which gets pretty gross, uh, as you can imagine. So we, we ask that you don't flush those flushable things down because they really aren't good for the uh, treatment system. Uh, it really binds things up, costs a lot of money to, to remove those things. Um, and if they've damaged pumps, it costs even more. Uh, so it's really better for uh, the environment, better for your local municipalities uh, if the only thing that goes down is uh, toilet paper. Okay, thank you for your time and expertise. Absolutely, thank you.